Hey guys, so I want to go over how GraphQL resolvers work. And to help me out, I'm going to be using Apollo Launchpad. And I cleaned it up on the left a little bit, so there's no comments. And here is where we're going to be changing the code. And over here, we can now query and see what the results are as we change stuff. So at the top here, this is the schema called type defs. And then right here, here's the resolvers. Now the goal of the resolvers are to get the data um, that users query or to fill the mutations that users request. So here we have a very basic schema with a type of query and inside of that it has one property called hello which expects a string or returns a string. So now in our resolvers we can have our query and inside of that we have hello and then this is our resolver function right here. And the goal of this function is to return a string back because that's what we expect and that's what they're gonna be asking for back. So now it's gonna give us a few things in our parameters. We're gonna go over what root is in a little bit. Arguments are any arguments that are specified in our schema. So right here we have none. So this is just gonna be an empty object. And then context is something coming from the server and this is just kind of extra things you might need to use in your resolver. So right now we're returning hello world, so that's why when you query hello, you see an object called hello world back. Now there's also this extra junk about extensions. Don't worry about that. That's just Apollo Launchpad adding that. Um, it doesn't really have any meaning with this. Okay, so let's look at an argument. So if I wanted to, I could pass an argument with parentheses and say the name of the argument. So the name, I'm actually gonna call it name, and then the type, which I'm gonna say is a string. So now in my arguments, I can get access to the name that they use. So I could pass in, for example, the name is Bob. So in my resolver, I'm not doing anything with this argument right now, right? So if I were to run this, I still get hello world back. So if I want to utilize this argument, I have it access to it in arcs. So what I could do is instead of saying hello world, I could say arcs.name. And now I'm going to take this argument here and pass it, and that's what's going to get returned. So now I can change this, and I'm going to get different stuff back. Now, usually you want to return more than just a string. And also, I should mention before that, um, notice how we have a string type back. If I tried passing anything else, it would get mad. So like if I tried returning an array, um, it says string cannot be represented. So it doesn't like that. So make sure you return a string back. You need to return the exact type um, that it's expecting. But a lot of times you're gonna do more than just returning a string. So we're gonna create another type called person. And I'm gonna give him a name and it's gonna be a string. We're gonna create a new thing here called get person and that's gonna return a person. So now that we have a new guy on query, we need to add it here, a new resolver for it, so get person. And again, we get root args context. And now here we need to return a person. So what is the type of person? Well, it's an object, right? And then it has a name, which is a string. So we're going to say name, and we can say his name is Bob. So now if we run this, and instead of getting hello, we were to get person and grab the name. And we get Bob back, and we get get person, which returns us an object with name Bob. So notice how that matches up here. And also notice how the type query, the shape of this matches the shape here. Um, that's important. So the same keys you see here, you see there. Okay, so you might want to now nest objects. That's pretty common. You could add as many regular fields as you want in here, but you might create another type called pet. And I'm going to give the pet two fields. So I'm going to say, is the pet a dog, which is going to be a boolean. And I'm also going to specify the sound the pet makes. So this is going to be a string. And I'm gonna add this field to person. So I'm gonna say pet is pet. Now, if I query like this, nothing changes. 
because I didn't ask for a pet. But I can now ask for a pet, and I can select what fields I want from the pet. So I'd like to see if it's a dog, and I'd like to see what sound. Now we're gonna request this, and we're gonna get null, right? Because if we look at what we're returning from our get person resolver, there's no pet in here. Um, and that's fine, because we said it can be null. But if I wanted to get data from this, I could say pet, and I could say is dog is true, and the sound the dog makes is bark. So now my request returns this object back like that. But an interesting thing about resolvers is you'll only get the data you query. So what I mean by that is if I get rid of the word sound and I request this, we only see is dog true inside of pet. We don't see the sound anymore, even though we're returning the sound from our resolver right here. So it doesn't matter that we returned extra fields in our resolver, it's going to go ahead and GraphQL automatically just picks out the fields that it needs based on what the person queries. So like if I wanted to, I don't even have to query the pet at all. I can just grab the name and this whole pet field is going to be ignored when that. So that's kind of interesting. So another thing is I might not want to just um, resolve. So like notice how this whole object is getting returned. So we'll go back to fetching our pet and is dog and sound. Notice how get person resolves the whole thing, the whole object all in one. But you don't have to do that. You can actually do it in parts. So how you would do that is I can actually add another resolver. So I can add a resolver. So we have a resolver for query. We can have a resolver for person if we want. We can have a resolver for pet. So I'm gonna create a resolver for pet. And so one of the fields I could add was, for example, sound, or I could add is dog. So I'm going to say sound. I'm going to say root args context. And here I'm going to return um, moo. And this is where it gets kind of interesting. So notice how the sound is moo now. Even though I said the sound is bark down here, and this is what's getting returned. So how GraphQL works is it'll first try to resolve this person. And so it's gonna come over here and it's gonna get all the fields from here. And then it's gonna go to the pet resolver. So it moves inward. So it tries to get all this data in one blow, which it does, but it still goes to the inside resolver of pet and then the resolver of sound. So here's the resolver for sound inside of pet and it can return moo. And this will actually override sound itself. And now this is where root becomes a thing you can use. Um, and we also no longer have to provide sound here if we don't want to, right? So now we could just say is dog and then we can return the sound right there. So now we have sound of moo still coming out. And then we can also use the fields that we have right here to determine this field. So what I mean by that is the root of pet has what the value of is dog is and the value of sound is from the upper object. So what does this mean for us? Well, I can do root is dog. And if it's a dog, I can say bark. Otherwise, I can say moo. So here I specified that is dog is true. So the value of this is going to be true and so it's going to be bark. If I change this to false, um, it's now going to return moo because it is not a dog. So it's able to access this field up here in get person. So whatever I return from get person, it actually uses down here. And this is universal. So if I were to add a second get person, so get person two, and we can copy this, we can paste this in. I can say, and we can request both of these. Okay, so we can see right now that the exact same object, right? But if I say is dog is true here, it's now gonna say bark down here for uh, get person two. 
and it just uses this right here to request it. So now if I wanted to, I could hard code it. We have it like in this little check, but I could hard code it and now both values, no matter what is here, um, it's gonna get it. And sometimes you might not even have is dog, right? So like I might just be like this, and this is gonna cause a problem um, because we expect to have the pet. And okay, so we just end up returning null for the pet because we weren't able to get the is dog field. So if I wanted, I could specify that here. So I could say return root dot is dog, or if they don't specify whether there is a dog, I can just say false. So now our pet, all our pet still returns null. I was hoping um, it wouldn't. I guess because we didn't pass anything here. Let's try passing an empty object in. So now we get is dog is false and sound is moose. So now it, root is going to be empty because that's what we're passing in here. But for example, if I have this as true, this is going to go to bark because we check whether it's defined. And if it's not, we just say false. And I think we might even be able to return this just this because it'll assume it'll turn it cast it into the right type so we can check if that works um, and oh, it looks like it just returns null from that so it's good that we are using or false so yeah so this is just like a quick little introduction to how resolvers work and how you can kind of uh, stack them and resolve little bits and pieces at different times. I really recommend playing around with this and then just kind of seeing all the different things. This is something GraphQL does by default. You didn't have to configure stuff in any way. It automatically just like chain works in a chain, moves down and resolves inner types and inner objects like this. So it takes a little while to get used to. Um, what I want to do in the next video tomorrow is go over how you might do a more complex example with right now I've just kind of hard coded all this data like this, right? Uh, what would this look like if I was, for example, doing a more real life example with fetching from an API and getting data from that? Because that's gonna be a really common case that you're gonna be using this with that. So that's it for this video. Let me know if you guys have any questions about this or GraphQL resolvers. Uh, highly recommend just doing what I just did right here is going in and playing with the different types and seeing what the return values are and it kind of just gets you uh, used to how this stuff works. And I'll put a link to this launch pad in the description below if you want to run this and see uh, the code for it. So that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching.